Um, all right, so I'm going to create, create a new layer here. Um, press Alt, so like that. Uh, so it's going to be the red one. Let's use one of the red colors. It's kind of like purple anyway. All right, something like this. Um, and I just like conveniently have those very bright colors from my references, but you know, the, the more the saturated the textures are, the colors that you choose, the more realistic it tends to be. Um, okay, so we have this red one. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing by clicking on a new layer, Alt, and this is gonna be a slightly different hue. Yeah, slightly different. Um, and this one is gonna have a mask that is gonna change the, the, the base color, but it's also going to add a bit of uh, extra high, um, high frequency details. So let's find something like that, like noise. I'm gonna find a cool noise. Let's try, let's try this B and B and W spots too. See what that gives us. Might be a little bit more. We might need something with less contrast. Blue noise fast. Let's try this one. Um, I'm gonna drop it in there. And I'm gonna get closer here. Try planner, just following the same workflow. Uh, I'm gonna play with the tiling. There we go, I can see it now. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, I'm gonna increase the balance and the contrast. In fact, I'm gonna change this for now so you can actually see it to a black color. Okay. So I think this, um, this noise is very, very tiny. So it might not be what I need. Let's try a different one. There we go. I think this one would be better. We just need to contrast it a bit more. Mm, it's kind of like a dirty noise. I want something a bit more consistent. Let's try clouds. More dirt, three. There we go. I think this one might be a little bit better. Yeah, this is more consistent. Those are the type of little bumps that I want to generate. Um, so sometimes it's just a about like finding the, the right uh, map uh, to create the right um, mask, really. Let's play with the tiling a bit. Okay, so now we have those nice spots. Um, and what I'm gonna do is go back to the layer and I'm gonna change it to slightly brighter, red, more orangey as well. And I'm gonna add the roughness and the height. So in the height, I'm going to push it forward just to create the bumpiness. And that already adds lots of details. Might be a little bit too much. All right. Uh, so you see before, after. So it's adding those like high frequency noise details. And with the rough, we can play around with, you know, how rough these bumps are. So I want to push it back a bit. So you see it from this angle. If I turn this on and off, around this area, how it just changes the roughness. So this is how I start playing around with that. I think that's working fine. So we now have, again, another red material with some subtle bumps. Um, I'm gonna add a few more things just to make this red material a bit more interesting. Uh, so I'm gonna add another layer, make it just color. And let's do, let's do a different noise. Let's try this grunge that I think we've used that before as a mask. Yep, and I'm gonna change this with some of the filters that I show you. So I'm gonna go for warp. Uh, so I'm warping this quite a bit. And then I'm gonna use a blur. So pretty much what I did before, I'm just using it in a different order. So I'm warping things first, and then I'm blurring them a tiny bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this and this is gonna be Let's set it to a, a very bright red and I'm going to set it to overlay. So it's going to be very contrasty and I can play with the color. Let me make it a bit more purpley. Okay, I'm going to try multiply because I want to darken it. Very dark and very bright color. Nothing, um, nothing affects the UVs as in the UVs that you have, they're gonna stay the same. Everything that you're doing is just literally 
warping or blurring the, the, the actual images or the texture. So it's not nothing to do with the UVs. I mean, it has something to do with UVs, but it's not, it's not changing them. Uh, I'm going to add rough and height again. So with the high map, I'm going to push it really high so that we can see the difference. Uh, by the way, if you see something like this, let's say in a portfolio, I immediately think this is not good. <laughs> um, because again, it's the same, um, the same concept that I've been reinforcing that is all about the subtleties. So again, it's very easy just to bring in a noise and then just push it. It's like, oh, look, I have lots of noise. But then you just completely override all the hardware that you put into. So um, even the height map, is, it has to be very subtle. So I'm just going to push it up a tiny bit just to distort things slightly. And then the roughness map, I'm just going to make it very, very reflective. All right. And I'm going to have to go back into the branch dirt and I'm going to play around with the balance and the contrast so it's not everywhere. It's almost like a burned um, flesh, which is cool. Uh, and then I'm going to use the, uh, the opacity of the color just to reduce the, the intensity of the color. And this is one of the cool things about splitting the different channels. So right now I'm reducing the intensity of that color so that you don't see those very clear red, dark red spots. Um, so it just sort of blends with what I had before. Um, but I'm not changing the intensity of the roughness or the intensity of the height map. So that it is pretty cool. Okay, so one more thing just to complete this one. Uh, let's add another layer and let's go for, let's try this liquid. See what we, we get from this liquid. Sometimes I just do this. I just try different things and, and see if they, if they stick. I throw in the, what is the, the saying? Throwing the spaghetti or the pasta to the wall and see what sticks. That's what I'm doing. And I think this could be, could be interesting, especially if we add maybe a bit of height to it, like inverting this. All right. Um, I think it could be a bit smaller, all these details. Add more contrast. And then I'm going to blur it so it's not as obvious that I have those lines in there. But again, super subtle stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to take this color, make it really dark, like a blue tone, set it to overlay, just to add more contrast. Play around with the, with the hues. Again, I'm still you know, throwing the pasta to the wall at this point. Multiply, it's a good one. And I'm going to set the roughness back up a little bit. Okay, so um, a rather complex material. Uh, but again, I'm just focusing on this is a red material. I already have blue material. Uh, the next, the last step of the of the workflow would be just how we can combine all those things together. Um, let's go ahead and check the roughness and all of that. So I'm going to go to, we can press C for channel. So again, this is the, the subtle variations in the red channel. You see there's a little bit of that orangey yellow bits. Um, and just looking at this, I might be reducing this a tiny bit more because I think it's a bit too strong. There we go. Um, if I press C again, uh, this is the roughness. So you see there's a lot of variations in the roughness uh, compared to what I had. If I turn this off, this is the roughness in the blue channel, which is non-existent. I mean, it's like a single clean stuff. Um, I'll sh actually, um, let me just show you right now. So let's go back a step. If you want to add variation in the roughness with the blue, what I will do is, um, you know, select, let's start from the second layer here. Uh, select that one, click on rough, and then that's it. You have a variation already, uh, but I'm going to keep it very, very subtle. I'm going to add variation in roughness to all of it, but everything is going to be really subtle. That's it. Okay. Now let's back into, go back to my material and let's select all of these control G and I'm going to call this one red face. Um, and one of the important things that I want to show you in this workflow as well is that uh, by default, when you create any material, any, yeah, any layer or anything uh, for a height map, it is set to, um, if you click on this drop down, you can go to the height map. So this is showing you just the, you know, that channel, but you see everything is set to LDGI, which is linear dodge. So this is a really good option to, to add complexity and to add height maps all over, you know, the, yeah, like a, like a stacking different height details. Um, however, 
if for example i have i want to have the details of the red material that i created to override whatever is underneath the blue one even though we don't have that many details uh, what i need to make sure i do is in the high channel in the folder i'm going to set this from linear dodge to replace so when i click on replace and you see how change it changed a few things so let's set it back to uh, linear dodge so pay attention to these areas if i set it to um pass uh, sorry not pass through uh, replace it's going to replace the material underneath and it's going to give me the details for um just this material so that is an important thing um and it could be it could be annoying when you're trying to uh, apply different materials on the same model and then you add them and you see oh i'm still seeing the the details from a different material that i created like combine but i don't want that i want to replace that's all you have to do you just need to make sure that whatever you want to replace in terms of details from the layers below you set the height channel to replace that's a another another quick tip for you all righty so um let's go ahead and add one more maybe uh, this one is going to be pretty simple it's going to be a black material with uh with roughness and i'm going to add um actually yeah and i'm going to add another another layer with a um hang on i'm just trying to think what would be the best way yeah let's let's do it with a a, a red color you know what I, i'm going to stick to whatever i plan <laughs> so um i cover what I was planning to do anyway. Uh, and I'll show you this tip later. Okay, cool. So um, I'm actually going to do this within the red um, red material because uh, I haven't showed you the generators, which is one of the most exciting things about Painter. So um, let's click on a fill layer, right? And let's click on the black mask to create a black mask on this one within this folder. And uh, you can also right click and give it a, a color to this folder so that you know that you're with in the folder um, and in this mask i'm going to click on the magic one and cl click on add generator so these generators are the most um interesting quick things to do in, in in painter to generate a bunch of different details um because they look for the mesh maps that we created all those uh, normal maps and you know uh curvature maps and all of that to create the effect or to create the mask so i'm going to click on generator and i'm going to go straight to the ambient occlusion and there we go so because I click on this generator, the um, this specific, let's say, effect looks for the input maps or the image input maps, which are the ones that we generated from the high res to the low res when we baked. So we have this ambient occlusion now in here, um, and then we can just play around with that. So it's just a black and white image. If I press the Alt and go into the mask, uh, you can just go ahead and do this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken all those bits and pieces inside. So I need to flip the mask because in Painter, anything that is white is visible. Anything that is black is hidden. So right now I need to invert that. I'm going to click on global invert. So now only these areas that are white uh, are the, the mask basically that I'm going to use to apply uh, the colors. So that's it. I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to set this to blue uh, or white, uh, sorry, <laughs> from white to red. <laughs> I'm going to set it to multiply and maybe just go for a blue color or like a purpley one something like that again i want to make sure that it's pretty subtle and then i can select the mask i'm in occlusion and i can play with the balance see what's the reach of that i'm in occlusion and then i can obviously tweak the intensity to make it subtle so that's one thing uh the next one would be another material so just want to make sure i cover the generators so the next material will have those generators as well so let's click on a new layer that's the one that is going to be let's make it grave so that you can see stuff um let's uh, create another one as well and this one will be will have a black mask and we can click on generator and this one is going to be a curvature so the curvature is going to look at the curvature map which has all those nice tiny details all the pores uh you know coming from zbrush and we're gonna enhance this in a way so i'm gonna select this and I'm going to actually change it to really dark black color. And in the mask, I'm going to invert it. There we go. So basically, we're putting this black color of this layer right into the crevices. Uh, and we can change the balance of that curvature, as you can see there. So it's going to be pretty dark in the crevices. Um, and then you can, you can change this even more. So if we go into the mask, holding Alt, uh, and you expand the curvature here, you can play with it, just the sharpness 
of the curvature. So that might be good. Um, you know, it might be too sharp in here, so I can just reduce the sharpness a little bit, uh, the fine details, you know, you can refine all of that. So it gives you a lot of control. Um, but this is just one of those things that is good to just play around with and see um, what you can achieve with it. And obviously the global contrast and balance that could also help. Um, okay, so we have these really dark colors in uh, the curvature. I think I'm gonna go back to the default ones because um, I was happy with that anyway. Okay, so um, we're gonna take this, sorry, the one at the bottom, uh, sorry, the one at the top, I'm gonna call the alt key just to make sure it's just color. And the one at the bottom, again, just color, and then maybe add the roughness just to make it uh, a bit rougher. This kind of like a leathery material, so it's not as shiny. Um, we can even take it a step further. Um, I think we should invert it actually. That's one thing. Yeah, sorry, there we go. <laughs> um, take the, red, the, the black color and we're gonna go to rough and we're gonna make this really, really rough. So anything that is really deep into the crevices would have, wouldn't have any, any shininess to it. Um, let's add one more layer and another black mask and another generator. And this time we're gonna go for dirt. So I'm using just the ones that I generally use to set up things. So I'm in occlusion, I covered, um, curvature I cover and now dirt. So dirt is a really nice one because it's using the curvature and the ambient occlusion, occlusion to create this, uh, this dirt map. So I'm gonna go for a red color so you can see what I'm doing. Play with the dirt level. Uh, I think I'm gonna invert this one. And I think just like this, you can create very interesting stuff, right? I mean, I kind of like this already, just with these bright colors. Um, all right, something like this. So I'm just going to target those areas that were maybe too gray. So in other words, I have my gray base, then I have this black uh, focusing on the crevices and the, you know, the, almost the amino occlusion of things. And then now I have the same sort of thing but with a slightly more grungy bit on the opposite side of things. So I'm gonna use this one as a lighter gray, and now I can take the, the base and bring it down a bit. So I'm just playing with the hues now. Writing this up, and also I'm gonna hold the alt key, color, add roughness. This is gonna be a bit rough as well. Not super shiny. Okay, so that that's it. Let's go ahead and make it into a single group. And let's do a quick recap. So we have the very simple blue, the very simple red, and the very simple black. Uh, but if I go into the channels, so this is the albedo of the black color. It's not just black, right? There's a bunch of variations um, that I think are are powerful. Same thing with the with the red, and same thing with the blue. So now we have three basic materials that we can use to combine together uh, manually, right? And the cool thing is that you can save each one of these materials. Let's give this one a black base creature, right? Uh, the cool thing is that you can right click and save these materials as smart materials. So anything that you put into a folder will be saved as, as a material. So just to show you how that works, um, I'm gonna make it into my folder of smart materials. I'm gonna right click on the blue one. I'm gonna go down to uh, create a smart material. And that is going to give me the, the material here with the, the name that I give it. So blue base creature, right? Let's do the same thing. Red base creature, create a smart material. Black base creature, create a smart material. So this is really cool because if you, let's go ahead and delete everything. Right? If you start this from scratch or you start a new project or with a different character um, that you wanna use those materials, all you have to do is drag them in. So blue base material, drop it in. It works in exactly the same way. Black material, and let's type red creature, red base creature, drop it in there. Oh, let's just push it in the same order. Um, so yeah, it's working exactly in the same way that you set it up because it is a smart material. So you will be able to access all the layers and all the masks and tweak them, the, tweak the parameters for any other project. So it's very uh, non-destructive workflow. It's really, really cool. Uh, 